Okay, so I'm using Dynamips to emulate a router here, and here we are. We are emulating a router, and we are through this setup connected to the console line, and we can see that by the R1 Con0 is now available. So this is how you would normally access a router if it's sitting on your desk and you have a cable connected to the console port. So hit return to get started, which is exactly what we will do. And now we can see we get the host name and then the prompt. Do you remember what the greater than sign means? It means that we are in either privilege level zero or privilege level one. In this case, we're going to be in privilege level one because this is our user exec mode. And we can verify that, not with a who, but with a show, if I can type it. So there we go. We can see that the privilege level is one. So this is our user exec mode, which is our default mode that Cisco iOS is going to put us in. And we do not have a ton of options here. If I issue question mark, we can see the commands. Now that's going to look like a lot of commands, but as we see when we get into privilege exec mode, this really isn't a whole lot of commands. As iOS gets bigger and as the, the uh, platforms get more involved, you do get more commands here. Uh, the big ones that we cannot issue are configure terminal. And you can see Cisco iOS is saying invalid input detected at the caret sign. Uh, basically, it's pointing at configure. And the way that we can verify that we don't have access to the configure command is if you type the first letter of the command, in this case configure, starts with a C, and then hit the question mark, the Cisco iOS help will show you all the commands that belong, that, I'm sorry, that begin with that letter, or it could be, you know, a series of letters. We'll just stick with C, because we should see a few here. So we have clear, connect, credential, and crypto that are available. We do not see configure. That's because in this privilege level, we do not have access to that command. The other thing that we cannot do is issue the reload command. Well, here it gave us a little different thing. It translated means it's trying to translate that into a uh, fully qualified domain name. But basically, if we do the same thing where we check for commands that start with R, we have resume, radius, release, renew, resume, oh, and then R login. We do not have reload. So that's a little bit of built-in security with these devices that when you're in user exec mode, you can't really do a whole lot of damage. You can do stuff like show IP int brief. If you're not aware of what these commands do, I'm just showing you some show commands. Not going to go into what they do, but this one just shows you the interfaces that have IP addresses assigned to them. And we can see that they're up and up. So you can see here uh, show oh, interface s0 slash 0. This is one that you'll use quite a bit. Uh, you can see the packets are in and out. Basically, like I said, it's for troubleshooting and collecting information. So it's a very limited subset of commands that you can use. So now let's go into the next CLI mode, which would be privilege exec mode. And to enter that, we have to type enable. And what this is going to do is this is going to basically enable here means enable privilege level 15. So if we hit enter, we don't see much of a change, but we do notice that the prompt changed from a greater than sign to a pound sign, and that's giving us a tip that we are no longer in privilege level one. So if we issue a show privilege command, we can see that we are in privilege level 15, and this is the highest level. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a second, I thought you said that you would have to enter a password to get into this, and generally we would. This is what happens when you do not configure and enable password. If I do a show run, which is show the running configuration, and I'm just gonna pipe enable. I'm sorry if this is a little bit confusing for you guys that are newer to CLI. Basically this is saying show me the running configuration but only include the bits that have the word enable in them. And I know that the command to configure and enable password is going to be enable password or well to get off on another tangent enable secret but it's going to contain the word enable. And just for shits and giggles and general knowledge uh, when you do the include it is case sensitive. So we'll hit enter and it will parse through the running configuration. And if it doesn't return anything, that means that it does not see this character string in there. We do not have an enable password set on this device. And if you remember from the slides, I said this is not a good thing. So now the problem here is that you've got Joe Blow walks in. He says, oh, look at this. There's the router. You know, you don't have your router physically secured. Oh, look, 
<laughs> what a lot of cases will happen is that in the wiring closet or in the data center, there will be any number of console cables around or in a lot of cases, still plugged into the console port of the router. He connects it to his laptop, he gets in, he types the word enable, and now he has basically root access to your device. For God's sakes, please configure and enable password. It should be one of the first things that you do. What I want to show you here is I have another router over here, R2. Okay, and R2 is connected to R1 via serial connection, and I do have IP addresses set up, and on R1, I have a VTY password setup of Packet Lab. If this is going over your head, don't worry about it. Basically, all I've done is I've set this up so that I am able to access R1 via a Telnet connection, which is how you're going to be managing most of your routers out in the field. So to Telnet, you type in the word Telnet. In this case, we're going to type in the IP address of the serial 0 slash 0 interface on R1. So we should be able to connect to R1, and I should be able to log in with the password Packet Lab. And here's what I wanted to show you. So remember, when we were on the console line on R1, we could type enable, and because there's no enable password configured, we just hit enter, and we were in privilege exec mode. When we do it here, when we're connected via the VTY lines, which is how Telnet connects, we're not able to do this. Because we don't have an enable password set, we have a, a little bit of additional Cisco security. It'll come back and say no password set. So now you cannot get into enable mode from the CLI in this case. You would have to go back to R1 on the console line and have an enable password set. So that's a little bit of extra security. Again, make sure that you configure an enable password, but it's kind of nice in one way in that it makes it a lot harder for hackers to uh, get root level on your box. The thing that where it will come in, in uh, to play, and I speak from experience, is that you're configuring a router and you're testing it on your desk and you're connected via the console line and you completely forget to put an enable password in there because you didn't really need one to get into privilege mode on that router because you're connected through the console port and the console port connection is going to react differently. So keep that in mind. I don't want to get off on a huge tangent here. We will jump back on R1 now and continue by first of all uh, configuring an enable password. Okay, so we're on R1, we hit enter to connect via the console line. Does anybody know the command that we need to enter to go from user exec mode to privilege exec mode? Well, let's enable. Okay, so now we're in enable mode and here we're gonna get a little two for one because I am going to show you, I generally don't type out configured terminal, it's usually conf t, but for this lesson I will make the sacrifice of a few extra characters. So now we're gonna show you we're in privilege exec mode, and uh, we verified that earlier by doing the show privilege mode and seeing that it was privilege level 15. We could tell by the uh, pound sign that we're in a different mode. If we type configure terminal and hit enter and we go into configuration mode, then we know, again, we were in privilege exec mode. So we hit enter. We're now in global configuration mode. We can tell this, again, here's our host name, and then there it is. I mean, that's going to tell you I'm in config mode. We also get the little enter configuration commands one line per line and with control Z. And if you remember from the slides, this is not always the best idea. We explained it there. But basically, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here. I'm going to configure and enable password. There is a whole set of lessons on hardening routers and passwords. Um, basically, all we need to do here, I'm going to make a packet lab. Now, how can I get out of this? So I've, I've entered this and now in order to get into privilege level 15 or uh, privilege exec mode, I will need to enter the enable command and then it will prompt me for a password. I will have to put in packet lab. So can you tell me how I can exit out of here? How I can get back into privilege exec mode? Uh, there's at least four ways. I can type exit, I can type end, I can use the keyboard shortcut of control Z or control C. In this case, let's just use exit. <laughs> 